is that it was Allah's order. This is the main point in this verse, the main learning, the biggest message for us. For us in reality is this, that sajda prostration was being made to us Adam alayhi salam. But the, the children were being trained, Adam, go, and your children of spring should remember this prostration that was done to you. So what was that prostration? Which we are severely in need of today. First lesson that was given was this. To all three forms of creation. That maybe the question will rise that uh, there's one creation made of light, one of fire, one of clay, soil. So how can this be that... The, the, the creation made of clay, soil, those who are greater than him in terms of what they're made of are being to prostrate to human beings. And this is Allah Ta'ala wanted to eliminate this doubt that it's my order that needs to be looked at. Doesn't matter what order I give, you have to embark on that order. You have to implement that order. That's it. To bring my order into reality is your duty whether you understand it or not. Uh, no excuse, you don't look for a way out or a bypass, no. Rather the hukam, the order I give to you after going to this world, if you want to be successful in the world, then this is the biggest test for you. Subhanallah. Adam, the, 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 the son of Adam, the biggest test for him after he comes into the world is this, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send ahkams, orders upon them. Via, Allah, via his his final prophet, the seal of the prophets, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It's the final prophet. Allah subhanahu wa taala gave him the Quran and the Sharia. Allah will give this to him and the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam with Allah's hukum. He will deliver the hukum, the order of Sharia, to the people. So our duty is that order of Sharia. We need to bring it into reality. That's it. That's our test for passing and failing. That's the first lesson for us. To learn and to pass away. So the malaika was stood and the jinnat was stood. That your success is in this. If you do this, you're successful. If you don't, then you will fail. Subhanallah. Nobody can uh, question or challenge. He's greater. We were greater. That was a greater. No. The first lesson is this. That whatever order I give, you need to bring that into reality. And this is called deen. Deen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clearly in the Qur'an gave this message. This is the whole deen. ma'atakum rasul That whatever your rasul, your fit, my habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whatever he takes from me, gives to you, whatever he gives to you, it's from me, Allah says, from me. وَمَيَّتُوا رَسُولَ فَقَدْ أَطَاعَ اللَّهِ that Allah's Rasul His obedience, if you follow Him and obey Him, it's as if you have obeyed Allah. Remember this. Remember this order of mine. And when my Rasul gives you an instruction order, whether you understand or you don't, whether your environment accepts it or not, whether your society accepts it or not, whether they're capable or not, that wherever you are in the world, Islamic or non-Islamic country, wherever you are residing, wherever you are present, Wherever my Nabi's hukum comes, Subhanallah. In another part of the Quran, Allah Taala says, "Whoever opposes my Rasul, whoever opposes my Rasul, when clearly he's given a message, he's telling that don't do this action, leave this action, don't wander around without parda, don't be immodest, don't do wrong actions." Whatever individual opposes this, وَمَا يَشَاقَهُ رَسُولُهُ After he's been advised clearly, blatantly, this is an event, clearly I've given you the Qur'an, the Sharia, the, the principles, and you know what is right and wrong. And that person who leaves this path, <clears throat> who shuns this path, then remember what will happen. That those people who leave my path, Allah says, those people who leave the path of Iman, belief, those who leave the path of Allah and His Rasul, Allah Ta'ala says, then they will enter into Jahannam, hellfire. 
This is what will occur to them. Jahannam will be their abode. That will be the worst of places for them. And what is the punishment being given for? For which purpose? For which reason? That whatever my Rasul brings my hukam, you cannot oppose that order. The initiation of the deen and the world was from this point. The most important part of deen, Allah Ta'ala says, whatever akams come to us, orders come to us, and there will be difficulty. This is the test. And with those difficulties and problems, with along with them, what will we do? وَمَن يُطِيَ اللَّهُ رَسُولَ فَقَدْ فَازَ فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا That person who has implemented Allah's orders according to Rasulullah's Sunnah Sharia, Allah Ta'ala announces there's no greater success than this. And there's no worse consequence than this, that if we don't do all these uh, c- capabilities were present within him. Yeah? So, if he's an alim, a mufti, a muhadqari, and such a big personality, shaitan was, uh, Satan, can he reject Allah like this? Allahu Akbar. Allah Ta'ala is explaining this point. Yes, a person like that can reject Allah. How? Why? Because all the ibadat he performed, the worship, uh, shaitan, all his worship, his ilm, his knowledge, he was an abid, a zahid, Allah is khabir and basir. Allah knows, all knowing, all seeing, hearing. And he didn't do these things for Allah's rada, Allah's pleasure. He didn't do these things out of Allah's love for Allah's love. Listen clearly. Being an abid, alim, zahid, mufti, this and that. This is not the proof of elevated rank. Shaitan did this as well. Yes. So why was he expelled? Shaitan. Why was he rejected? Why did he become wretched and cursed? Reason being that all is ibadat for the pleasure of Allah. Rather behind that was a greed. And the greed he had was that he was saying all of these things for this reason, that he wanted khilafat on the earth. He was saying, Allah, when he sees me, he'll give me the khilafat, the leadership of the world, and I'll be a chodri. He knew the earth was being made and it's got to be given to somebody. Yes, it wasn't in his mind at all that the man will be made of clay and he will become the khalif of the earth. Say, subhanallah, subhanallah, what a... Beautiful point. So shaitan had this misconception. He had this desire, want, greed to become the leader of the earth. And that's why he's worshipping. So here's the lesson that Allah has given to us in this verse. Allah has given us this lesson. That analyze yourselves. Measure yourselves. The ibadah you're doing, you become in an alim or a qari or a scholar or a hafid. Is this for Allah Ta'ala's rada? Are you doing it for Allah's pleasure? Or is behind this the greed of the world, earning money, earning wealth, becoming respectful, becoming dignitary? Yes, he, he lost it all within seconds. Everything was exposed. He said, no, no, I can't do this. What a big action of rejection. Imagine that when ibadah like this is done, and this is a very important point, when ibadah like this is done, when a good deed is done like this, behind which there is objective of the dunya, to earn money, to earn dunya, to earn status or fame, recognition, whatever is your near, if it's not for Allah's sake, then remember that action, if anything is not done for Allah's sake, then behind that ibadah, a disease, a sickness is created. Allah Ta'ala creates that. Behind that deed, Allah Ta'ala creates a disease, an illness, a sickness. And that sickness, Allah Akbar, is such a vast sickness, is such a vast disease that the first sin, remember, as soon as a person comes into maturity, Allah Ta'ala shows this because he had this feeling that he had a reason for all his ibadah. So Allah Ta'ala exposed that uh, put such a sickness inside him, uh, put such a sickness inside him, due to which he was destroyed. Allah gave him this punishment. So when any person, when any person, whatever sadqat or good deed, whatever he does, if his objective is not Allah's nearness, rather it's the dunya, the world, and being recognized, then he'll get the same sickness about which? Hazrat Qatada rahmatullahi states, that the first sin, the first sin in the universe, and that will be, will come about kibar, takabur, pride, and that's the biggest form of shirk you can uh, take and understand. Why? Why is its punishment?